<laughs> hey Zoom, while we're waiting, um, can you guys please sign in through the sign in link that is right up there? It really just helps with our metrics and helps us keep track of who's coming to our meetings, gets like the stuff with the school and stuff. Thanks. All right, everybody, we're going to start with the workshop or general meeting. Uh, first off, my name is Felipe. I'm the treasurer for uh, Swift. I'm Ali. I'm Swift's graphic designer. And this is the Cyber Essentials for Linux Basics. Uh, well, before we proceed, before we start, um, this is just a reminder to become a paid member. It is $20 for spring semester, and you get a whole bunch of stuff. Any graduating seniors are eligible to get our Swift stoles. Um, we get t-shirts, stickers, webcam covers, other merchandise. And I believe you can get part of certifications reimbursed. At least that's what Jessica said last time. Yes. So, and you get access to our alumni mentorship program, which in my experience has been really helpful. And this is just where we are in our current workshops. Right now, we're here where the Bread Era is, um, Cyber Essential Linux Basics. And this is our overview for the um, rest of the semester. So our table of contents, this is what we're going to be presenting today. What even is Linux and what the is a kernel? Um, our file system, where's my C drive, our features, the very basics that you need to know, and essential command drum roll, please. What even is Linux? So Linux is an open source, um, is a family of open source operating systems that are all based on um, Unix and they all run on the Linux kernel. So does anyone know what it means? Okay. Does anyone know what it means to be open source? Anyone? That source code is freely available to be audited, modified, and um, used by anyone. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that's that's basically it. Open source software means that Linux is free to use. It was released under an open source license. Um, this present or prevents any like restrictions on the software, and it also means that it is maintained by the communities that use it. So, for example, if in a new Linux like update for one of the distros that is currently out, you find a bug, you can submit it. Other users will review it, patch it, and then it can be included in new patch updates. Okay, so this is just a little visual of what a kernel is and what an OS is. So first we have the hardware, you know, the very physical things of your computer, CPU, um, memory, things like that. Then we have the kernel. The Linux kernel is the heart of the Linux OS. Um, according to linux.com, the kernel is the core of the system and manages the CPU, memory, and any peripheral devices. 
The kernel is the lowest level of the OS in that it is what interacts with all of the hardware, but it runs at the highest priority. The OS itself, which is encompassing the Linux or the kernel, um, is a computer program that itself contains the kernel, but also manages a bunch of other fun stuff like the UI, the file system, process and services, memory, IO devices, et cetera. And the yeah, applications are just like the software you download, the stuff that we interact with every day, Chrome, Discord, all of that good stuff. And this is just another um, picture, if that helps you better visualize it. Hardware, kernel, and OS, and then the applications above it. There's many flavors of Linux-based OSs. Um, some people call it flavors. Some people call it distributions or distros. You'll probably run into both. I personally prefer flavors. I think it is more fun. Um, but here we have Red Hat, uh, Ubuntu, Mint, Arch, and Kali Linux. Um, they're just different parts of Linux. Some of them are more specialized, like Red Hat is usually used for enterprise like businesses. Um, and then Kali is usually used for pen testing because it has a bunch of hacking tools. All right, so I'll be taking care of the file system. Um, as it says there, where's my C drive? Um, so when it comes to uh, Linux uh, in basics, this is how it looks, and it looks a little confusing, but this is the like file tree. And uh, as you can see at the top of the hierarchy uh, structure root, which um, is like, in other words, for, for Windows like admin, um, you can, uh, configure, uh, read, write, um, execute anything. Um, when you're in Linux root, you're, uh, you have permissions to do um, basically anything to configure on your operating system, on your distro. Um, and as we go down, we go from uh, bin, boot, dev, um, uh, Etsy, um, which I'll be explaining in a couple of slides. Um, so this kind of gives you an idea of how we get through the um, the file tree structure. And also as you start working with it, um, start uh, and you start messing around with these uh, different distros, you start to get the feel of how, like where, uh, what applications or softwares or services goes to where. And we'll be discussing that in a bit. Uh, and that'll give you quite an advantage when it comes to troubleshooting or configuring a file or um, denying or allowing on certain connections onto your uh, Linux distribution. So we're gonna start off with uh, root. And as you see, there's my C drive. Um, root, as you can see, is the highest level, as I mentioned before. And you, with this, you are able to do um, basically any uh, permissions on your distro. Um, if you log in to your uh, virtual machine, I like last week we've gone through um, VMs. Um, usually you set up a user account. Majority of the time when you do changes or configurations, you probably have to use a command called uh, sudo, which most people, it's like super user do. Um, and that gives you the permissions to execute it. But there is another way to um, just get into the directory of root. Um, and we'll discuss that on Friday. Um, but once you are in that, you know, all goes, you know, go ham, go destroy the box, um, <laughs> um, go crazy. Uh, and this is uh, bin, which is short for like uh, um, binary directory. And for those who are uh, for bin, you know, it's like, in other words, like ones or zeros. Um, this is a directory that gives you, that gives, contains all essential programs um that uh that are installed into the uh distro and also uh programs that have uh commands as kind of it goes by uh it's an executable program um as well as for i know we have bash here but bash will touch on that next week that's next week's general meeting and workshop and we'll be also conducting that as well so it's very to learn bash it's very uh useful when it comes to like events like rvp or um things in general because that'll teach you how to like automate um executions and commands
Right. All right, um, Etsy or in short for et cetera, it contains a uh, majority of your configuration files. Um, these are files that usually have like a certain like service. Um, so like your network um, configuration file or um, SSH, um, which we'll likely discuss about that in, in a bit. I know I'm throwing all these um, terminologies and uh, to you, but we'll, we'll lightly touch on it. Um, et cetera, or Etsy will contain, and once you go to that directory, if you like LS, will it'll be like a long list of like services, which sounds like looks kind of like overwhelming, but if you know what you're looking for, um, it should give you like an advantage on like what you want to configure. For an example, uh, for example, the event for NCAE, for those who attended or for those who are planning to attend, um, they gave us a box uh, that the network file was messed up for those who are aware of uh, network uh, protocols for the IPv4. Um, it was usually, you know, we see like 192.168. It was completely like switched and we had to go into the file using a text editor, which we'll discuss as well in a bit and then save the file and uh, restart the service. And then, you know, eventually you, you troubleshoot it and, you know, you got a connection up and running. So that those connect, those types of uh, configuration files are stored into your SC directory. Uh, home, plain and simple, it's, it's where users files are um, go here. So you when you create a user account, then they have like to download whatever uh, types of data that's in relation to that account, it'd be stored into the home directory. Um, this contains pretty much all user downloads, documents, and pictures, um, personal data, if you could, any personal data, which I highly don't recommend. <laughs> um, and yeah, anything, any data that's related to that user account will be located into the home directory. Um, I know I said users, but and this kind of looks like we we'll pronounce it as users, but it's not. It's uh, users uh, system resources. And this directory, usually it's when the Unix uh, files that are stored will. Oh, um, this is where data that's uh, shareable and read only is contained into. Um, the user system resources. So um, anything from files or programs or um, operating systems or download packages managers are stored into this directory, but um, it only is available via shareable data and read-only data. So var, which is short for uh, variable data files, um, this is kind of an important one when it comes to, uh, well, I mean, each directory is pretty important depending on the situation that you're in. But this one's pretty important because um, these are variable data files and these contain like log files or um, databases or websites. These are files that if, um, what's it called? When you add stuff to it, um, or a user starts um, to download uh, programs or or, or other uh, data, it would be stored uh, mainly into this directory. And uh, because usually that's like kind of like the go-to spot for anything that comes in within that uh, distribution. All right, so features. Um, as mentioned before, I mentioned about uh, text editors. Um, um, so a more user-friendly text editor feature would be a uh, nano. I know a lot of us either use Vim. There, there's like a, a group that people are like, it's all Vim or it's all uh, 
Nano, but Nano is a pretty uh, user friendly. It's a little bit complicated when you start using it, but it's user friendly compared to other text editors. Um, as I mentioned before, it's a it's a terminal based text editor. Um, usually, uh, when you start downloading like distros from like Ubuntu, um, it's already comes pre installed at least for the newer versions. So if, um, for instance, you want to uh, configure in a um, a file, you would just put uh, if you're not in root directory, you would put sudo nano and then the file name. And since it's a uh, modless um, feature, uh, once you get into that file, you can already start start typing away. And um, and then there is a, a command which um, to exit and save the file. This is also um, and if oh if you're not sure sure if you have nano into your distro, you can use the command nano tech tech uh, version, which for those who didn't understand tech tech, it's the minus signs or the hyphens. We use the term tech tech. Um, and for if you're using an Ubuntu or an or Debian distro, you can use sudo app install nano if you don't have it, or if you're using CentOS or Fedora, you use sudo uh, yum. Install nano. Now uh, we're going to lightly touch on on Vim. Uh, Vim is interesting. Uh, it's obviously it's one of the most more well known uh, text editors because it's been uh, introduced for a while now, early 2000s, 1990s, and it came from a guy named Bill Joy. Um, which first created V or Vi. Um, and then another person named like Bran, Bram M um, liked it, but wanted to improve it on it and hence created Vim, which first at that time in the, during the project was like Vim or V imitation. And then eventually once he released it, um, he renamed it or rebranded it to uh, Vim, which in parentheses it's Vim or V improved. Um, once again, it's a bit complicated, but people like it because it's also very customizable. Um, and also, just to give you an idea of like how odd it is to use that text editor, um, if you're in the text file um, using the command, you use H to move to the left, J to to go down a line, K to go up a line, and L to go to the right. So if you get if you can get used to that, then hey, you're you're solid to use Vim. Okay. Um when another feature that I find very useful um, is using uh, a firewall feature for Linux. And I know there's IP tables, but that's I feel like that's a little complicated for uh, newcomers. Uh, for Linux, EFW or uncomplicated firewall is uh, very, very nice and simple. Um, there's things like simple syntax and full syntax. Um, and I'll give you examples of what a simple syntax command or a full syntax command is using uh, uncomplicated firewalls. But commands like when you're utilizing firewall, UFW commands, you can do stuff like allow. So allow is service connection like uh, port 22 SSH um, or deny it. Um, you can reject, limit, um, check status, show, reset, reload, or disable. Using these, uh, this feature will definitely give you an advantage if you're trying to like defend your machine. Um, but then again, you know, for those who have attended RAP, you know, I'd say double check on the services that you're getting great uh, points on, because last thing you want to do is uh, shut down a service that you're being scored on, and then you're getting no points at all, and you're like last place. <laughs> but um, so for like a simple syntax, you can do something like uh, sudo ufw allow 22, and this allows the port connection 22 
which is SSH or people also, oh, and full, full name is called uh, Secure Shell Protocol. Um, and that's just a simple syntax. If you want to go more complex, uh, you can do something like a full syntax, which is like pseudo UFW deny from a specific IP address. So like, for example, 192.168.2.100. And also you can, on top of that, you can also uh, deny the IPv4 address as well as the port. So in, in this example, we can do like the IP address and port 25, which um, you don't have to like uh, learn it like or have it by memory, but it's a um, SMTP um, protocol for port 20, 25. And if you guys want to like learn more about like ports and protocols, um, you can search up Google uh, common port services and it'll give you a common port service. Um, common because usually when you download these distros and start utilizing these services, they're going to be assigned to those port numbers. All right. Well, lastly, one of the uh, last features is system CTL. I learned it because it was a headache to learn this. Um, and I know I mentioned before NCAE. Uh, so one of the boxes was they give you the box and obviously the network configuration file was messed up. The subnet was messed up. Everything was messed up. The, your whole point was to kind of investigate and fix the box. Um, so at first, you know, finding the, the modified uh, config file, I was like, you know, ecstatic. I was like very happy that I found it. I can fix the problem and um, save it, exit from it, and then start using the internet. Not quite. Um, since my rule of thumb after that box was if you're configuring a service or a um, comic file that is in relation to a service, after you exit, um, it would help to use a uh, feature or a command like system CTL. Um, because when you exit the file, you, it may seem like you have fixed the problem, not quite, because um, I couldn't, I wasn't able to connect to the internet until I used like pseudo system CTL like restart, um, and usually that would that should finalize the changes on the config file. But you can also check the services on that with using um, pseudo system CTL status and like um, like your assigned. Um, network file or like your IPv address. And it should give you like a output status command, whether it's like on or off or like up or down. Um, and also this can also help when like for some boxes, um, when you start practicing, they might like mess up with like your SSH file. Um, so, like I said, when you start downloading these distros, get used to just going through like the directories. Um, and because if it's for an SSH file, you would have to go, for example, um, slash etc slash SSH and slash SSHD config file, which is a little complicated, but like once you get the repetition on like just maneuvering through the directories, um, you start to get the hang of it and see like if it's this problem, then it should be in this directory. Um, so yeah, rinse and repeat and you'll get the hang of it. <laughs> so before we move on, we're just gonna take a second and ask how you guys are doing. Do you guys have any questions so far? Anything that you don't quite get? We're gonna move on to commands in a second and that's gonna be a lot of information coming at you. Anyone? Good question. You're saying uh, the services? I'm not sure what those are. Regardless of the name, if it's Sir, um, like services. Wi What's that? Like the Wi Fi or routing environment. Yeah. Um, also, like um, a well known one is like SSH, um, which will set up a, a workshop. Um, what's it called on Friday? So um, I know like a good practice, which we might practice on, on Friday. Um, depending, we're still brainstorming, but one of the good practices is a website called like Bandit or Over the Wire, and there's like a level called Bandit. And to get into the uh, level, you would have to use SSH, 
which is a secure shell, which you can connect to a, a terminal you know, remotely in a way, um, in a secure way. And um, that's a service because you're utilizing that port service. Um, usually on like your Windows box and it's like, or like your main machine, um, it should be already up. But if not, there's ways to activate it and get it up and running. Um, same thing with like uh, your different distros. It's not, some are pre-installed, some are not, and you would have to just uh, install it. But once you install it, you would have to use the system CTL to do like sort of system CTL start SSH and that should get it up and running, which now you have your service up and running. Once you have that, then you can do like um, SSH, usually the host name, um, for one of the boxes, it was like um, over the wire at, and then like either the domain or the um, assigned um, IPv4 uh, address. And if that is typed correctly, then you would then uh, connect it successfully. A good uh, idea if you connect it successfully for most secure um, accounts is it'll ask you for a password. And if you, you know, once again, yeah. correct, then you logged in successfully using the service SSH. Does that answer your idea? Oh, it's like a program training. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. A process, um, like you said, is just, it's just any program that's running. And a service is a process that's running in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, um, once you start to get the hang of like services, um, it should, um, you should check the services that are running, especially if you do plan on attending uh, RVD, because you might see something that's running and you're like, mm. we're not being stored with that on that. Um, and the, uh, if the red fingers, if they're good enough, they are on template and more if you don't stay with them, they will get you. <laughs> um, um, they can uh, leverage using that service to get into the Do we have any other questions before we continue? I saw that there was something in the chat. Let's see. Oh, no, it's just someone. Okay. Any other questions? No, no, no. Yes, no. No? Okay, cool. Okay. Let's see thing again. All right. So we're going to get into our essential commands. Um, yeah, perfect. Thank you. All right. So we're going to start off with our file commands because these ones are the really basic ones, stuff that you need to know um, to allow you to navigate through the file system and manipulate it. So first we have CD. That's just change directory. It can bring you to the um, any, any directory that you specify. So if I want to navigate into a folder from the root directory, I would put CD and then that folder name, and it would take me inside that folder. Um, now I want to see what files are inside of that folder. So then I would use LS, which is list contents, um, and then LS hack L if I want to list directories and permissions as well. There's a bunch of different uh, modifications you can make to a bunch of these commands, um, but we're not going to specify all of them right now because that would just take forever. <laughs> You guys are more than welcome to Google that or ask us questions on Discord. Mine is Anayade, his is Elegy um, in the Swift Discord. But we're not going to get into that right now. Um, so if I want to move this file to a different folder, I would use MV and move something to somewhere else. And I could just, um, whoop, there we go. I would put MV file name and then slash directory name. <clears throat> CP makes a copy of something. So then I can just specify what file I want to copy. And there I have a new copy. RM just removes something, whatever you do not want. You can just take it out. Um, MECDIR makes a new directory. It makes a new directory in your current working directory. So if you are not in the directory that you want to make a new directory in, um, you have to specify where you want to make it. I believe that's tack P. Um, but yeah, so if you just use mcdir by itself, it is in your current working directory and you can find your current working directory by doing pwd and that prints where you are. So if I am in my own personal um, Linux and I'm in desktop, it would print 
slash home slash an IA slash desktop. Um, the first slash represents your root directory and the very last thing represents where you currently are. Okay, more file commands. We have cat, that means concatenate. So it returns or prints the entirety of a file. That is good for small files. If you are printing something that is really, really long, it is just gonna take up your entire terminal. So it's not always the best thing to do, um, but you can just cat file name. Then you have head and that prints the first N lines of a file, the head end of the file. By default, N equals 10, unless you specify it. But let's say I already do something like this, head N 40 with the file name, it'll print the first 40 lines of that file. Then we have tail, which is the inverse of head. Um, it prints the last end lines of a file. You can do the exact same thing. It doesn't have to be an even number. It doesn't have to be divisible by 10. It can be anything. So we are printing the last 29, for whatever reason, 29 um, lines of a file right there. Then we have chmod, which can get a little confusing for some people, um, but it means change mode. And this changes the permissions of a file. So chmod, there are three numbers that you are going to have. Um, first is going to correspond to the file owner. The second is going to correspond to the other members in the same group as the file owner. And the third is going to be everyone else, including like, what is it? Un unauthorized, unauthorized, something? Unauthorized. unauthorized users, just like anyone. It doesn't matter who. Um, yeah. And the values that correspond with that. Um, so one is to execute two is to write, and four is to read, and you add them up. So for example, if a file had max permissions for everyone, it would be chmod 777, because you add them all up. But if I were to create a file and I have max permissions, but he does not, and he's in the same group that I am, um, and I wanted to give him, let's say, write and read permissions, just not to execute, then I would have seven, he would have six, and I don't want any of you guys to have um, anything to write or to execute. I just want you guys to be able to see it then I, it would be seven, six, and four. Yeah, so it gets a little confusing to some people because you do have to do a little bit of adding and people forget like what corresponds to what, um, but it's just right there, file owner, other members in the same group, everyone else. And then execute is one, write is two, and read is four. Okay, and then some more basic commands that you do need to know. SSH, which Felipe mentioned earlier, is secure shell. It securely connects you to a remote system. Um, you're going to see this, again, used in things like Try Hack Me, which hosts a lot of tutorials and learning, learning modules geared towards all levels, Bandit Over the Wire, which is a war game geared towards beginners. Um, we'll link to Bandit in our study guide that we're going to post, um, so stay tuned for that. Um, then we have sudo su or sudo su, um, which allows you to run commands as another user, even as the root user. Um, which has maximum permissions, given that you have the proper permissions. Um, if user is unspecified, it will default to root. This command should be prepended or placed before a command to run as root or another user. So if I wanted to run something as Felipe, I would just do sudo u Felipe and then whatever command I want to run. And I have to authenticate with the password um, and then I can run as him which when you're configuring your own systems is obviously something you want to restrict because people running commands willy nilly as other people is not very secure. Um, then we have ping. Ping just pings the IP of an input and prints out the results. So it basically sends like a little message um, and then it gets a signal back and just lets you know that you're connected to something or that something is up and running. Um, you're going to have to do that if you do like try or not try hack me, hack the box um, just to ping your boxes to make sure that you're connected to them and stuff like that. And Nmap, which I'm not going to get into too much, but it is just a network mapper. So it shows you which um, ports are open and stuff like that. And you just do Nmap and whatever IP you're trying to connect to. That was a lot. Does anyone have any questions about that? Yes, no, maybe. No, everyone good on the commands? Good. Okay. We're definitely going to go um, and put those commands to use this Friday. So I really hope that you guys all come out um, to our workshop Friday, 6 to 8, um, where we're going to teach you guys a more hands on um, way to get used to using all of commands in Linux. 
and just navigating your way around the operating system. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, we really appreciate it. If you didn't get pizza, get it already. Oh. Yeah, so the last slide is the sources that help me and are useful. So the first one is explainshell.com. Um, and if you were to like go onto the website, it's just like a search bar um, and you can put something like cat, which will explain the full term of it, which is academy, and it'll tell you what that command does. So I can go as simple as ls or as complex as almost chmod, but it breaks down the, the commands on and what it does. So which is a good way to learn the commands so that you can see whatever the situation is that you're in on a Linux box, you know, you, you know which commands to utilize. Uh, Google, you'll learn that Google is your best friend. You know, when it comes to uh, trying to troubleshoot something, um, first thing you should do is trying to Google it because other people have dealt with it before and they'll find ways and how they found the solution to troubleshoot it. Um, there's different ways, um, you know, you're more than welcome to choose however, you, you know, suits your, your way of a troubleshooting um, that situation. And then um, the Linux. The last one, yeah. The last one um, is the Linux file system hierarchy. Um, this website is pretty useful for Linux in general. It is the Linux documentation project or tldp.org, but they have the Linux file system hierarchy, which explains in great detail all of the Linux um, file systems, what all of the different directories, like default directories are, what they do, what they hold. Um, it's really helpful if you really want to like, want to get into the nitty gritty of Linux. And that concludes our Internet? basics of Linux. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you guys for coming out. Ah, they turned it off. Mm -hmm.